Whoa, now we're getting to a harder problem. It says, determine the points where the function has a horizontal tangent line. So we're looking for the answer to be some x, y point or multiple x point, x, y points where we have a horizontal tangent line. Well, we're looking for m tan. Well, horizontal tangent lines have m tangent equal to zero. Now, when does that happen? Say our graph looks something like this. Notice, this is gonna be a very important concept for us this year. Notice here at the very top of this mountain or here at the very bottom of this valley, our derivatives go from positive to zero to negative, the m tan. So y prime equals zero at this top point here and we call that a local maximum point. And our derivatives here, our slope of the tangent is negative, and over here, it's positive. Well, if our derivatives go from negative to positive, they must pass through some point, and that's gonna be our minimum point, our local, it's called local or relative minimum point of the graph. So at the top of the mountain or the bottom of the valley, we're gonna have a slope of our, uh, sorry, slope of our tangent line that's such a mouthful. Can I just say derivative or y prime? Our y prime will equal zero at the max point or the min point. And you can see now we're getting into something very useful mathematical, mathematically. If you have a graph and you're looking for the highest point or the lowest point, we can find that by setting our derivative equal to zero. So first thing we wanna do, m tan equals zero means our derivative is equal to zero. So first thing we want to do is find the derivative. Well, using the power rule, now the derivative is not so hard to find. Multiply exponent times coefficient and subtract. Multiply and subtract. And then uh, a constant, remember this is x to the zero, so if we multiply, we get zero. Look what I'm going to do there. If I set this derivative equal to zero, then I'm finding the mins or the max. And we'll talk about how do we figure out if it's a min or max later, but it will be a critical point for us. If I subtract three from both sides, I get 10 X equals negative three. So X is equal to negative three over 10 or X is negative 0.3. That is the X coordinate of my X, Y is negative 0.3. Notice I'm not done yet. Not done yet. I have to find the y. Now look at our first equation. If you want the y, then go to the y. This equation says when x is any value, we'll tell you what y is. If you want the y, and we do, we want the y here. If you want the y, go to the y. f of x is equal to 5x squared plus 3x minus 2. That's the original equation. If you want the y when x is negative 0.3, we'll get five times negative 0.3 squared plus three times negative 0.3 minus two. And so the function value at negative 0.3, if you do this out on a calculator as I did, you'll get negative 2.45. So our point, we were asked for the point where the derivative is zero is this. When x is negative 0.3, y is negative 2.45. We found it. Same directions here. Determine the point or points where the function has a horizontal tangent line. We have to understand they're asking us where the slope of the tangent equals zero. Well, what's a synonym for m tangent of our function? Well, that's where the derivative is equal to zero. Well, not, a, not too much of hard work to find the derivative. Derivative of a constant is zero. Multiply and subtract negative six x plus multiply and subtract 12 x squared. Ah, uh, if we set the derivative equal to zero, then if our function looks like this, notice we're looking for the max point or the min point. That's where our derivative or m tangent is zero. That means we have a horizontal tangent line. Tangent lines with slope of zero, we say the derivative is zero. Now, 
I've seen a lot of students over the years do something like this. Let's make this 12x squared equals 6x, and then they don't know what to do. A better way to approach this problem is to try to factor and set up the zero product property, which says if a times b equals zero. Look, the product of two factors is zero. Do a little detective work. That means that a must be zero, or b must be zero, or both must be zero. So we can assume both possibly are zero, which means our first step here is to factor. Pull out your common factor, which is x, or we could say negative 6x, and we're left with 1 minus 2x equals 0. Now, if I factor, one of the first things I do is distribute and distribute to see if I got it right. Negative 6x times 1 is negative 6x. Yep. Negative 6x, negative times negative is positive. 6 times 2 is 12. x times x is x squared. So I've got this correct. Now I'm using my zero product property here saying negative 6x must equal zero or 1 minus 2x must equal zero or both. Divide both sides by negative 6 and we get x is equal to zero. Remember, that's the first of a coordinate pair, x, y. Here, if I subtract 1 from both sides, I get negative 2x is equal to negative 1. Divide both sides by negative 2 and I get x is Ne uh, sorry, positive one half, right? Now notice these are x coordinates of x, y coordinates. That is the form of our answer. I want the y. Notice if I want the y, I go to the y equation. F of zero will be three minus zero my, uh, plus zero. So I can even do that in my head. I get 0, 3. Why do I do that? Any term with an x in it is going to go to 0 when x is 0. So I've got one answer. I have either a minimum or a maximum at this point, 0, 3. And if I find f of 1 half, of course, that's going to be 3 minus 3 times 0 0.5 or 1 half squared plus 4 times 0 0.5 to the third power. So f of 1 half will give us, when I do this out, I get 2.75. So this is another point, one half or 0.5, our second answer is 0 0.5 comma 2.75. And how did I get this 2.75? I just used my calculator there.